we are going to start a brand new series this week and uh, I'm going to be a little different and not go with the book like we have been doing so I'm going to go through one of my own series that I put together a couple years back and I've taught it through it once so you're not the guinea pigs you know, <laughs> it'll be the, the second time through here we're going to be in 1 Samuel 22 to start with And we're going to be talking about unsung heroes and obscure villains in the Bible. So these are the, the little guys that they're never uh, the focus of any Sunday school lesson. Every now and then you might hear one of them mentioned in passing, but hardly anyone does any type of in-depth study of all these guys that, that are just mentioned in passing in different passages of the Bible. So we're going to see if we can go... A little in-depth with this uh, on some of these unknown little guys that you would think they're not mentioned much so they didn't really play much of a role but some of them actually were very significant uh, and played a major part in the stories and without them a lot of the major characters wouldn't have been able to do what they did uh, so we're going to start with one of those that very crucial uh, role that he played this the guy by the name of Abiathar. And it, again, it's never the subject of any messages. Uh, I've, I've never you know, been in church all my life. I cannot remember a single message I've ever heard preached about Abiathar. But he's a pretty fascinating character. Uh, led a, a very eventful life. And we see his first mention in the Bible in 1 Samuel chapter 22 and in verse number 18. And the king, this is King Saul, and the king said to Doeg, Turn thou and fall upon the priest. And Doeg the Edomite turned, and he fell upon the priest, and slew on that day fourscore and five persons that did wear a linen ephod. Okay, so a little bit of background uh, here. What has happened is David is fleeing from Saul. Saul is wanting to kill David because of jealousy. And so David is fleeing from Saul, and on his way out of Jerusalem and out into the wilderness to get away from King Saul, he stops by the temple and he asks for, for help. He asks for some bread and they give him the, the show bread. Uh, he asks for a weapon and they give him Goliath's sword and that becomes David's sword that he uses for the rest of his life, giving you an idea of the, the stature of David. He's not a little guy. He, he's big because he's carrying a giant sword and that's his personal sword that he uses the rest of his life. And so the priest help him by giving him food and, and weapons and food for his men that are with him. And then David leaves and, and flees on out of Jerusalem and into the wilderness. Uh, King Saul learns about this and he goes to the priest and he is furious that the priest have helped David. And he tells his men, his soldiers, to kill the priest. Well, his soldiers are all Jews. They revere the priest. They're not going to kill any of the priests. They're not going to harm them at all because they know that's you know, these are the, the men of God. We're not going to harm them. Uh, Doeg here is not a Jew. He's an Edomite, meaning he's a descendant of um, Esau. Uh, so he's not a descendant of Jacob. He's not a Jew. Uh, and Saul tells Doeg to kill all of the priests. And Doeg says, sure, no problem. And so he starts killing all the priests and end up killing, was it say, uh, four score and five? So 85 people that did wear a linen ephod. That's the priestly garments. Uh, so that's that's where we are here, verse number 19. And Nob, the city of the priest, smote he with the edge of the sword, both men and women, children and sucklings and oxen and asses and sheep with the edge of the sword. And Doeg just goes on a rampage here and he just kills every living thing that he comes across. And one of the sons of Ahimelech, the son of Ahitub, named Abiathar, escaped and fled after David. And this is where we first see Abiathar. And Abiathar showed David that Saul had slain the Lord's priest. And David said unto Abiathar, I knew it that day when Doeg the Edomite was there that he would surely tell Saul, I have occasioned the death of all the persons of thy father's house. So David takes this personally. And he said, Abide thou with me, fear not, for he that seeketh my life seeketh thy life, but with me thou shalt be in safeguard. Okay, so Abi Abiathar has now fled from Doeg. He's caught up to David and tells David what happens. And so he now spends the rest of uh, 
David's life, he spends right next to David and helping David. Uh, so this is where we first see Abiathar. He flees from the slaughter of all the priests uh, in Nob and runs to David. He's one of the few survivors of that. Now let's turn to the next chapter. Let me see a little interesting fact about uh, Abiathar when he comes to David. Uh, verse number one, they, they told David, Behold, the Philistines fight against Kela, and they rob the threshing floors. Therefore David inquired of the Lord, saying, saying, Shall I go and smite the Philistines? The Lord said unto David, Go and smite the Philistines and save Kela. So David goes into this battle, and then we come down to verse number six. And it came to pass when Abiathar the son of Ahimelech fled to David to Kela. So that's where David was when Abiathar finally caught up to him. David was fighting a battle against the Philistines in Kela. And Abiathar caught up to him here. And it says that he came down with an ephod in his hand. Now the ephod was a method that God used to communicate directly with the priest and with the Israelites during this time period. They don't, he doesn't do that anymore uh, because we have the scripture. But that's what one of the methods that God used to communicate directly with the people. And Abiathar saved that from the city of the priest and brought it with him and bring, came down to, uh, to David. Uh, so he used, David then used this ephod in Keilah. Uh, Verse number seven, it was told Saul that David was come to Keilah, and Saul said, God hath delivered him into mine hand, for he is shut in by entering into a town that hath gates and bars. And Saul called all the people together to war to go down to Keilah to besiege David and his men. And so David knew that Saul secretly practiced mischief against him, and he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring hither the ephod. Then said David, O Lord God of Israel, Thy servant hath certainly heard that Saul seeketh to come to Keilah to destroy the city for my sake. Will the men of Keilah deliver me up into his hand? Will Saul come down as thy servant hath heard? O Lord God of Israel, I beseech thee, tell thy servant. And the Lord said, He will come down. So David is wondering, is, is Saul going to come after me? He uses that ephod to communicate with God. God communicates directly to David and says, Yes, Saul's going to come after you. And in the following verses, you know, he asks, are the men of the city going to give me up? And God says, yes, the men of the city are going to give you up. So David flees and runs from Keilah and saves himself and his men from the wrath of Saul, all because of Abiathar bringing that ephod with him when he came to David. So Abiathar played a pretty big role there uh, in saving David from Saul. David used that ephod again at Ziklag, First um, Samuel chapter 30. All the way at the end of the book there, 1 Samuel chapter 30. Now, Ziklag uh, was the city, as David was hiding from Saul, at one point David took his men and his family and all of his men's families, a huge uh, group of people, and they settled in the city of Ziklag, which was in the land of the Philistines. Uh, and that was, that was their base of operations. Uh, David was hiding out among the Philistines to escape from Saul. While they were there, in uh, verse chapter 30, verse 1, it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were there and they slew not any, either great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So now the Amalekites, so a third nation, has come along and they've attacked Ziklag where the Philistines ruled, and they captured all of David's family and all of his men's families and everyone that was there in Ziklag, and they took them all away. And so David wants to go after the people and rescue them from the Amalekites. And let's look down to verse number 7. And David said unto Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod, and Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and the six hundred men that were with him, and and that goes on in the passage to say that they captured the Amalekites or defeated the Amalekites, and they rescued all their families and brought them all back to Ziklag. And so here we see Abiathar again 
playing a major role in uh, David's life at this point, uh, providing him with the ephod so that he can ask God whether or not he should go after this army. And so the first thing that we see about uh, Abiathar is that he is a survivor from the destruction of the city of the priest. Then we see that he was uh, David's priest while David was fleeing from Saul and provided him with the ephod. Uh, the next thing that we see is that uh, Abiathar then became a spy for David. Uh, let's go to 2 Samuel chapter 15. <clears throat> so we're skipping ahead 15 chapters here. And we're skipping ahead of many, many, many years in David's life. Uh, what's happened at this point, one of David's sons, Absalom, is now grown. And Absalom wants the kingdom for himself. And so Absalom convinces the people to follow him. And he leads a rebellion against his father, David. And so Absalom has now won this military, or is now launching this military coup against his father David and David does not want to have a battle in the heart of Jerusalem where a lot of innocent people will die and so Absalom is marching to Jerusalem with his army David has his <laughs> army in the city and David says I'm not going to let innocent people die I'm just going to retreat and so he leaves he flees Jerusalem and he goes all the way across the river uh, out into the wilderness area outside of Jerusalem and we pick it up here in, in chapter 15 and verse number 24. And Zadok also, that's one of the, one of the priests, <clears throat> and all the Levites were with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, and Abiathar went up until all the people had done passing out of the city. So this is David's military fleeing the city, and the priests are going with him. And the king, this time it's the king David, the king said unto Zadok, Carry back the ark of God into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again and show me both it and his habitation. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I, let him do to me as seemeth good unto him. The king also said unto Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, Ahimaaz thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. Let me... Paul's there point out something interesting in this verse. You'll notice at the beginning of verse 27, the king said also unto Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Thee and thou in the King James translation always is singular. So when they're talking to a single individual, they use thee and thou. When they're talking to two people, they use ye and you. So thee and thou is singular, ye and you is plural. The reason that the KJV does that is because that's the way it's written in the Greek. The Greek and the Hebrew both have Hebrew in this case. Yeah. Greek and Hebrew have singular and plural second person pronouns. English does not. And English did not back then either. So they, they kind of invented this concept of singular pro second person pronouns being thee and thou and plural second person pronouns being ye and you. And they carry that throughout all scripture. So at the beginning, art not thou a seer? David is talking to Zadok there. And then after that, return into the city in peace and your two sons with you. So now he's talking to both Zadok and Abiathar. And so we see him, he's talking to Zadok, and then he turns and addresses the two of them together and says, go back into the city and take your sons with you. Ahimaaz, thy son, talking to Abiathar again, and Jonathan, the son of, Ahimaaz, thy son, talking to Zadok, sorry. And then Jonathan, the son of Abiathar. So he tells Zadok and Abiathar, the two of you go back into the city, take your sons, and stay there. And then 28, see, I will tarry in the plain of the wilderness until there come word from you to certify me. Zadok, therefore, and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And then it goes on to say that David uh, left and went into the, the wilderness. And then we'll go down, let's see, let's go down to... Uh, Go down to verse 30. Well, well, we'll have to read 32 starting there. 31. Sorry, I thought we could skip some. We can't skip too much here. All right. And one told David, saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. And it came to pass that when David was come to the top of the mount where he worshipped God, behold, Hushai the archite 
came to meet him with his coat rent and earth upon his heads. Now we have another individual here named Hushai coming to David. And David said to him in verse 33, If thou passest on with me, then thou shalt be a burden unto me. Meaning, if you come with me, I just have to feed you. So you're not a, you're not a military guy. You're no help to me. Uh, but he said it in verse 34, But if thou return to the city and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been thy father's servant, servant hitherto, so will I now also be thy servant. Then mayest thou for me defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. So he sends one of his counselors back and say, I want you to pretend to be Absalom's counselor, and I want you to give him bad counsel and defeat the counsel of Ahithophel. Uh, and then verse 35, And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar the priest? Therefore it shall be that what things soever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt tell it to Zadok and Abiathar the priest. Behold, they have there with them their two sons, Ahimaaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. And by them ye shall send unto me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, came into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. So David set up this little spy network uh, with Hushai and Zadok and Abiathar, and then their sons are the, the runners. They're the messengers that take the messages back to David. And so Abiathar, again, plays a pretty major role here. Uh, for David, and I don't know why Absalom wasn't didn't catch on to this. I mean, Abiathar has been with David the whole time. Um, Abiathar was loyal to David because of uh, um, the destruction of Nob and and how he was the only survivor there. And I just I just don't get how Absalom didn't catch on to this little ring of spies that was set up there. But uh, yes, did you say Abiathar was like David's son? Or no, that Absalom. Absalom is David's son. Yeah, oh, yeah. So the the bad guy in the story right here, he's leading a rebellion, uh, is David's son. And uh, he should have caught on to that. I mean, he's he's very he's been in the palace. He knows who all of David's trusted advisors are. He should have caught on when David's trusted advisors are now advising him. Hey, you know, maybe they're maybe they're giving me wrong counsel, or maybe they're spying on me. But he didn't catch on. Uh, we do see that, that David's spy ring uh, played out and helped him in uh, chapter 17. <clears throat> Go to chapter 17 and verse 15. So remember we have, we have Hushai, who is the spy in Absalom's councils. And Hushai can tell Abiathar whatever he hears, and Abiathar's son can run and tell David. And we see that happen exactly here in 2 Samuel 17. Verse number 15, Then said Hushai unto Zadok, and to Abiathar the priest, Thus and thus did Ahithophel counsel Absalom and the elders of Israel, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly, and tell David, saying, Lodge, night, lodge not this night in the plains of the wilderness, but speedily pass over, lest the king be swallowed up and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimahaz, stayed by Enrogel, uh, for they might not be seen to come into the city. And a wench went and told them, and they went and told King David. Nevertheless, a lad saw them and told Absalom, but they went, both of them quickly, and they, and they have a bit of an adventure, um, Ahimaaz and uh, Jonathan trying to get to David. And they finally get there in verse number 21. It came to pass after they were departed, that they came up out of the well and went and told King David and said unto David, Arise and pass quickly over the water, for thus hath Ahithophel counseled against you. And David arose and all the people that were with him, and they passed over Jordan by the morning light. There lacked none of them that were not gone over Jordan. So they were able to escape from Absalom because of Abiathar uh, playing that crucial role in uh, David's ring of spies there. So Abiathar had a pretty eventful life so far, uh, but it doesn't end there. He, he plays another critical role uh, after David has defeated Absalom. I've, I don't know if you remember, but Absalom had really long hair that he was real proud of. He's riding through the forest uh, during the battle, tr trying to flee, and his hair gets caught in the branches of the tree as he's riding through the forest, and it yanks him off his horse, and he's just hanging there by his hair. And one of David's generals comes along and sees him, you know, laughs at him, mocks him, and throws three spears through his heart. And 
uh, uses him for target practice, and that's the end of Absalom. Uh, so after all that, David then comes back to Jerusalem, and all the different Israel has 12 tribes, and all 12 tribes have to recognize the king in order for him to be the king of, of the whole nation of Israel. 11 of the tribes recognized David when he came back. The one tribe that did not was the tribe of Judah, his own tribe, that he's from. They refused to recognize David as the king when he came back to Jerusalem. And I don't know why, the Bible doesn't tell us, but they refused to recognize him. Uh, and so let's, let's pick it up here in chapter 19. And verse 11. 19 and verse number 11. And King David sent to Zadok and Abiathar the priest, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, saying, Why are ye the last to bring the king back to his house? Seeing the speech of all Israel is come to the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren, ye are my bones and my flesh. Wherefore then are ye the last to bring back the king? And say unto Amasa, Art, not, art thou not of my bone and of my flesh? God do so to me and more also, if thou be not captain of the host before me continually in the room of Joab. And he bowed down the heart of all the men of Judah, even as the heart, sorry, even as the heart of one man, so that they sent his word unto the king, Return thou and all thy servants. So Abiathar was David's ambassador to the leaders of Judah to get them to accept David as, as the king again uh, on his return to Jerusalem. So again, a, a pretty critical role. So he, he's been a, a survivor, he's been a priest, he's been a spy, now he's been an ambassador. And then one last thing, and this thing's a negative, he then becomes a conspirator against David and against uh, Solomon, who is David's heir. So let's go to 1 Kings chapter 1. So after 2 Samuel, go down to 1 Kings All this time, Abiathar has been faithful to David, done everything David wanted him to do. But now David is old and weak, and David wants Solomon to, to succeed him as the next king. But David had many sons, and some of the other sons, kind of like Absalom, they wanted to be king. Uh, and one of those other sons was Adonijah. And he wanted to be king. Let's look at verse number 5. Then Adonijah, the son of Haggith, that's his mother, David is his father, uh, exalted him say, himself, saying, I will be king. And he prepared him chariots and horsemen and fifty men to run before him. And his father had not displeased him at any time in saying, Why hast thou done so? And he also was a very goodly man, and his mother bare him after Absalom. So he's Absalom's brother, and he's saying, I'm going to be the next king. And he starts telling people, I'm going to be the next king. And he gathers a whole bunch of people with him. And David's just sitting there doing nothing. And David, David doesn't want him to be king. David's already said that he wants Solomon to be king, but he doesn't do anything. And David had major problems with his family. Uh, he, he was a very bad father. Uh, he didn't discipline any of his children for anything that we ever see anywhere in Scripture. I mean, it, he was just a terrible father. <clears throat> uh, but let's pick this up, verse number 7. Uh, and he, this is Adonijah, he conferred with Joab, son of Zariah, and with Abiathar the priest. And they, following Adonijah, helped him. So here, Abiathar turns against David and starts helping Adonijah to make Adonijah king. And David eventually you know, squashes all this and puts it away because Adonijah didn't have nearly as much of a following as Absalom. Um, <clears throat> and then he, David basically left it up to Solomon to determine punishments. And Solomon decided to have mercy on Adonijah and his followers. We can see that in verse 49. And all the guests that were with Adonijah were afraid and rose up in every man his way. And Adonijah feared because of Solomon and arose and went and caught hold on the horns of the altar. And it was told Solomon, saying, Behold, Adonijah feareth King Solomon. For lo, he hath caught hold on the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear unto me today that he will not slay his servant with the sword. And Solomon said, If he will show himself a worthy man, there shall not an hair of him fall to the earth, but if wickedness shall be found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar, and they, he came and bowed himself unto Solomon, to King Solomon, and Solomon said unto him, Go to thine house. So Solomon has 
mercy on Adonijah, and we would assume he had mercy on Abiathar also, uh, because nothing happened to Abiathar here. But if you go to the next chapter, <clears throat> chapter 2 and verse number, uh, let's pick it up in verse number 12. Then sat Solomon upon the throne of David his father, and his kingdom was established greatly. And Adonijah the son of Haggath came to Bathsheba the mother of Solomon, and she said, Comest thou peacefully? peaceably? And he said, Peaceably. He said, And moreover, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And she said, Say on. And he said, Thou knowest that the kingdom was mine, and that all Israel set their faces on me. It's a bit of an exaggeration, but that's what he thought anyway. Uh, that I should reign, howbeit the kingdom is turned about and is become my brother's, for it was his from the Lord. And now I ask one petition of thee, deny me not. And she said unto him, Say on. And he said, Speak, I pray thee, unto Solomon the king, for he will not say thee nay, that he give me Abishag the Shunammite to wife. And Bathsheba said, Well, I will speak for thee unto the king. Bathsheba therefore went unto King Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her and bowed himself unto her and sat on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother. And she sat on his right hand. Then she said, I desire, thee a small I desire one small petition of thee, I pray thee, save me not nay. And the king said unto her, Ask on, my mother, for I will not say thee nay. And she said, Let Abishag the Shunammite be given to Adonijah thy brother to wife. Okay, so Adonijah is wanting a particular woman to be his wife. He doesn't think that he'll be allowed to marry her, so he asked Bathsheba, who is, Absol or not, who is Solomon's um, mother, Hey, go talk to your son and to convince the king to give me this woman to be my wife. And so King Solomon's response here in verse 22, And King Solomon answered and said unto his mother, And why dost thou ask Abishag the Shunammite for Adonijah? Ask for him the kingdom also, for he is mine elder brother, even for him and for Abiathar the priest, and for Joab the son of Zeruiah. Then King Solomon swore by the Lord, saying, God do so to me, and more also, if Adonijah hath not spoken this word, against his own life. Now therefore as the Lord liveth, which hath established me and set me on the throne of David my father, and who hath made me and, and house as he promised to Adonijah shall be put to death this day. And King Solomon sent by the hand of Benaiah the son of Jehoiada, and he fell upon him that he died. So Absalom gets really mad that this guy dares to ask for this woman as his wife. Uh, there's a whole big situation about you know who the woman is and all that, but we see Abiathar next. In verse 26, Abiathar really didn't have part in this. He wasn't part of this request to get Adonijah, this particular woman, as a wife. He just is a former associate of Adonijah. And, but Sol Solomon's wrath falls on Abiathar also. And in verse 26, And unto Abiathar the priest said the king, Get thee to Anathoth and unto thine own fields, for thou art worthy of death. But I will not at this time put thee to death, because thou bearest the ark of the Lord God before David my father, and because thou hast been afflicted in all wherein my father was afflicted. So Solomon thrust out Abiathar from being priest unto the Lord, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord which he spake concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. And so this, the last thing we see about Abiathar is that he's banished uh, from Jerusalem, banished to his uh, family home, and never allowed to take part in the governing of Jerusalem again, never to take part in the, the priestly duties of the temple in Jerusalem, and he ends up dying in, you know, ignominy out uh, at his own home, banished from the king. Uh, so he had a, a very interesting life, played a, a major part uh, in many parts of, of David's life. Uh, by the way, in, in verse 27 here, where it talks about um, that he might fulfill the word of the Lord, which he spake concerning the house of Eli in Shiloh. That's a, Adon, Abiathar was a descendant of Eli. You remember Eli had the two sons that were uh, abusing the priestly office and they were eventually killed by God because of abusing the priestly office. And Eli eventually died as a result of him not uh, correcting his sons and, and Samuel became the next priest instead of any of the descendants of Eli. In 1 Samuel 2 and verse 31, um, God pronounced a curse against Eli's line. Uh, let me get to the second sentence. 1 Samuel 2, it basically just says, you know, you're, you're, here we go. Behold, the days come 
that I will cut off thine arm and the arm of thy father's house. There shall not be an old man in thine house. And so Abiathar uh, is kicked out of the, the priestly house. And uh, that's the, the fulfillment. Here it says that that's the fulfillment of what God said in Eli. So apparently Abiathar would have died uh, somewhat young and not have reached old age after being kicked out and sent to his own home. Uh, so that's Abiathar. He started out as, as kind of a hero of the story and had a, a bit of a turn for the worse uh, toward the end there and uh, ended up uh, being the, the villain of the story. So any, uh, any thoughts, comments, or questions on Abiathar? Uh, what a guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And uh, I, it's fascinating, all these these little characters. I've got a hundred of them that I've got, I've got a list here that we can go through. That you don't hear anything about them. I mean, you don't hear anything about Abiathar in the message, but he played a very critical role. Uh, and without him, David may not have been able to defeat Absalom. Uh, David may have been captured by Saul at, at Kela and uh, may have may have never been king. Uh, so it was. He played a, a critical role. Uh, David may not have been able to unite the tribes again after returning to the uh, to Jerusalem after Absalom, uh, if it hadn't been for Abiathar. And so it's it's kind of sad and depressing that he turned against David at the end there. But uh, he had a, a very played a very critical role uh, in David's life. All right. Anything else on? I was just a plot twist at the end. I wasn't expecting it. Yeah. I was really expecting just like a happy ending. Like, you know, he just died of old age or something. But, you know, I guess it is how it is. Yeah. Yeah, as a movie, uh, if, if they were to make a movie of <laughs> Biathar's life, that people would say that was a terrible ending. Yeah. <laughs> how dare they end it that way? You gotta have a you gotta have a good ending. You can't have a, this plot twist. Just saw, he has this great life, and all of a sudden he's the bad guy, and, and he gets kicked out and dies. It's, that's a would not make for that's probably why he isn't the focus of too many messages and sermons because it, you know, it doesn't fit what we think of as you know, just see the pastor ending think. with that so that's what happens when you turn away from people that trust you yep, <laughs> at you the go. end and then yep. <laughs> have a good lunch <laughs> yeah, it's, it's quite a plot twist <laughs> alright I was trying to go through that really quick to get to the next one because um, we've got a hundred of these that we can go through so um, the last time I taught this it took me it took me um, I think it took two years to go through the whole thing uh, all 99 of them and I was trying to speed it up a little bit but some of them I've only got one or two sentences because there's only a couple of verses about them in the Bible but they still play a pretty critical role uh, but we'll we'll look at next week I know y'all won't be here, but next week we're going to look at uh, Abimelech, that the son of Gideon, and many people don't realize he was actually the first king of Israel. Most people, you know, all your, your Sunday school lessons say that the first king of Israel was Saul, King Saul, but he wasn't. Uh, king Saul was the second king of Israel. The first king was Abimelech, and what happened to Abimelech may be the reason why there was such a long period from when they had their first king to when they had their second king because he was an abysmal king uh so so we'll look at that that next week uh, or if you want to y'all want to look at it yourself